I'm Mikey from Tactics Live Tournament, and I am so glad you are able to join me in a new video series where I document my progress and completion of the first PvP tournament in War of the Lions, hosted by Tactics League. In this first video, we will be explaining the tournament format, our initial strategy for our tournament ready roster, and give you a breakdown of what to expect from this series. If you're new to the channel, welcome! I hope the mission of bringing Tactics Multiplayer to a wider audience inspires you to subscribe. What we're about to get into is kind of an advanced topic. Luckily, I recently had a conversation about what efforts and changes went into this PvP mod with the Tactics League moderator, Yoshinja, which you can watch here. All right, with that out of the way, let's set the stage for our road to victory. I want to throw out the disclaimer that the rules for this tournament are subject to change. Seeing as how we are documenting our entire journey, we will see how this plays out over time anyway, but I just want to manage your expectations right off the bat. As of the time of writing, the proposed Tactics League tournament will consist of a bracket style system with either six or eight players. Details on the structure of the tournament are still in progress. Each round, players will face off with their roster in a best of three matches to determine a winner. There are initial rules in place for determining tiebreakers in the case of a draw. Matches are limited to 15 minutes and 40 actions. Each player is required to submit a roster at the time of registering for the tournament. It consists of a minimum of five to a maximum of seven different units. The sixth and seventh units are considered sidebar units. This means you can swap out units before each battle in order to form new combinations of five, but you cannot change their individual loadouts of jobs, abilities, or equipment. You may field a maximum of one unique character each match, which I refer to as the general. Unique characters can be sidebar characters as well, though taking three swappable generals means you limit which troops you can swap out. Alternatively, you can opt not to use uniques at all, though their inherent abilities and class stats are definitely worth consideration. I want to preface this section of the video with a disclaimer that my roster building strategy is not set in stone, nor do I consider myself an expert in PvP strategy. This is simply my point of view on how I approach Tactics PvP. Over various playtesting rounds against other players, which I hope you'll join me for, I anticipate that my strategy will change and hopefully improve, leading to smarter rosters and better chances of victory. My first thought when thinking of a roster is how I want to win. To put it to words, you want to formulate your victory condition. How will your troops enable you to KO more of your opponent's roster, or be better at surviving and have less KOs on your side? Because this mod is balanced for PvP, you can expect a lot of trade-offs in regards to damage output, survivability, debuff application, or defense. Do I want to emphasize speed or brute force? Do I lean towards physical damage or faith-based magics? And how will my job selection affect those goals via innate abilities, primary ability sets, and equipment choices? We can think about this at the macro level all the way down to each unit at the micro level. Do we want each unit to be their own little superstar, a master of one, capable only of fulfilling a specific role and dependent on very specific victory conditions? Or do they tend to work together to create a sum greater than their parts, dependent on combos and precise setup? Indeed, we cannot think of our strategy of being static either. We have to think tactically in the heat of battle. Do we have answers for each stage of the fight? Your units might have strong opening damage, dealing huge amounts at close range, but then lack the HP pool to sustain a counterattack from multiple sources, thus becoming a liability for your team in the late game. You might want to set up a long casting spell early in the game, but will this unit have the support to see the spell through? And will this turn the tide of the battle in the mid game for you 
when the spell does cast. If you're saving that clutch revive for the very end of the match, have you done enough damage to the other team so you can actually push for a draw or even victory? All of these considerations funnel themselves into your victory condition. So you will want to bear these in mind when you approach building your roster. I know what you're thinking. That was a lot. And you didn't answer any of those questions, Mikey. Well, you're absolutely right. But you'll be happy to know that we will go through all of these and answer each of these questions by building a roster together. For my initial tournament roster, I've decided to have three unique characters and four generics, so I can swap out my general with two others depending on how I'm feeling about the matchup, and then my troops are locked in place. Overall, I like to have my general lead the squad, and my troops are there for support. Here's what I come up with to start our journey. Our quick utilitarian can be no other than Mustadio, the young engineer. I kept him as his main job to take advantage of his innate safeguard and put FOMO Hall in his hand to supplement aim in his secondary ability slot. Thief's Cap, Mirage Vest, and Brigand's Glove fill out his equipment with speed buffs and protection from some debuffs. With less than 500 HP, we will want to keep him at maximum distance from the enemy, being precise with our attacks aimed at weakened or vulnerable units. For our tanky general, we have Delita, known for his high bravery and access to holy knight skills. I've turned him into a knight as a primary job to take advantage of innate HP boost for extra durability. He's equipped with holy sword and combined with death strike should be outputting great damage at range and can close the gap to slash with his double-handed durandal thanks to move plus two. Ribbon will keep Delita safe from common debuffs while Grand Armor gives him regen to keep his HP topped off every turn. This is critical because of Sage's Ring and Cup of Life, which will convert any elemental attack into restorative HP, with any overhealing going to the rest of the team. And with 85 bravery, it is almost guaranteed to trigger. Last, we have our Death Star, and I have opted for the Big Bad Reyes as a Dark Knight with Dance. She has some of the highest HP available, enhanced by Grand Helm and Grand Armor, which add some minor debuff protection and give us regen. Tyner Rouge gives us a nice little stat boost in addition to providing Protect and Shell. Moonblade is perfect for maximizing our Unholy Explosion in combination with our generous HP pool. And Escutcheon 2 will give us the evasion we need while dancing. Speaking of which, our Mincing Minuet should be pretty decent with a final 21 PA, inflicting good damage while we slowly close the gap and finish off our enemies in mass with Darkness. For our troops, I would like a well-rounded group where all three generals can be supported as equally as possible. One of my favorite units is a Geomancer geared towards MA and MP, then throwing on Mana Shield to absorb incoming damage. I opted for Yaido as a way to put Protect and Shell on my teammates early on, which doesn't need MP either, and receives bonuses from Arcane Strength. I went with Cursed Gear, so I will only have to rely on Cup of Life for healing, as I'm always afflicted with Undead status. My white mage will be the one to keep non-undead units alive and be the source of overhealing from Cup of Life. I decided to slot Time Magics as a secondary skill set, especially for Hastja at the start, but also for Immobilize, Stopped, and more, potentially. Since Asuna can't cure everything, I have her equipped with a white staff to remove Doom, Stop, and Oil from my allies. To give her extra survivability, I decided to use Equip All Armor and slap on Genji Helm, Genji Armor, and Vampire Cape. The cape is there to absorb elemental damage besides fire and holy, so extra care will need to be taken to keep her safe from those attacks. Finally, move plus two for extra mobility. Next up, we have our mystic with speechcraft, our debuff extraordinaire. Again, we're going with equip all armor and Genji gear with a vampire cape. This time, however, we're using a rod of faith to better guarantee our debuffs go through, and the high MA will give our speechcraft higher chances of success. I opted for Mana Shield and Mana Font as a defensive measure on top of her already generous 500 HP. Our final troop unit is a Black Mage. I'm going once again with Equip All Armor and the Genji Gear plus a Vampire Cape for this caster. The boost to HP comes in handy with Golem, keeping 500 physical damage off of our units. 
Black mages come with innate mana font, so mana shield seems like a reasonable reaction ability to equip. For movement, I'm going with teleport in case I need to move her out of tight spots. And that will do it for our starting roster. We can test out the mechanics and synergies of our team by doing some easy fights against monsters before we get to the real proving grounds against another human. We're going to test out each of our generals to see how they mesh with their retinue. Hopefully, we can gain some insight into where their strengths are, figure out ways to mitigate weaknesses, and learn how to recover if things get a little dicey. Starting our testing out with Mustadio, we opened with his main skill set, particularly Arm Shot. Disassemble is a nice option to reduce PA and MA early on. Within the Aim skill set, we can lean on Aim Vitals to inflict doom on high HP enemies in the mid game. Take Aim gives us a slight damage boost for finishing enemies off. Auto Potion came in handy for us though 60 Bravery doesn't guarantee healing. Our main issue was damage output, but he is more of a debuff expert. Next up, we take a brief look at Delita's performance. We see Death Strike coming through for us in the early game with Judgment Blade. Closing the gap between ourselves and the enemy proves easy with skills like Divine Ruination. Strangely, our Cup of Life does not trigger with a massive Blizzaja Blast, which is a little worrying, but then we continue the slaughter with Judgment Blade in the end. Our last general is Reyes, and we open up with our Mincing Minuet dance routine. While this doesn't hit any enemies nearby initially, we can slowly move Reyes up into enemy range. Luckily, we maintain our evasion while dancing. Once unleashed, wave after wave of Mincing Minuet chip damage starts to pile onto our foes. We finish a group of enemies off with Unholy Sacrifice for big damage. First in our troops lineup, our Geomancer starts each battle off by getting Protect and Shell on our allies with Kiyomori. Getting long range damage with a chance of powerful debuffs through Geomancy is another strong starter. If your Protect and Shell falls off, a refresh of Kiyomori is advised, but be aware of your Katana breaking. Picking off stragglers from across the battlefield with Geomancy served me well until the late game, where we ended our battles with a fulminating Chirajuradin, dishing out massive damage in a wide area. Next, we review our White Mage. Our opening for her consists of Hestia for our team, so it's imperative we stick to a tight formation. If possible, we can opt to cast Re-Raise in our general. Over the course of the fight, we will probably need some restoration, but in a random battle, we leaned on debuffs like Stop. Towards the end of the fight, Haste Jub became useful to squeeze in an extra few turns, and we used Slow on any remaining enemies. Finally, we had a chance to test Cup of Life, but with no one needing healing anyway. Next, we look at our Mystic, who begins each fight with casting Belief on our White Mage to enable stronger heals for Cup of Life and better success rates for her other magics. Increasing our White Mage's bravery is also great in increasing chances of Cup of Life triggering. Turning our praise to offense, we can rely on hesitation to cripple enemies. If we don't see our reactions triggering enough, we can lay on the praise to our white mage. To help us finish off lingering foes, we can use Invigoration, which is instant cast, and gives us a nice bit of HP thanks to our Rod of Faith. If you need, a refresh of faith in the late game for heals or revives could be nice. Last in our roster is our Black Mage. 
our opening action is always going to be Golem, giving us 500 physical damage protection. The main function of our Black Mage is to trigger Cup of Life through elemental casts. This doesn't always work in our favor, as Vampire Cape has a chance to block spells. Other times it won't trigger at all due to our bravery. Luckily, there is a chance our spells will hit enemies too. Besides equipment disrupting our casts, having Shell or lacking Faith will lower the amount of healing bestowed on our White Mage, and less will be distributed via Cup of Life. That will do it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the introduction to this new series, where we covered the upcoming tournament format, how I go about building a roster for competitive PvP, and a preview of how the units will perform in battle. If you did enjoy it, be sure to throw out a like to say thanks. It helps the channel out a lot when you do. And I hope you will subscribe, so you'll be in the loop when I test this roster out against a live opponent. I will be creating a new format just to analyze the significant plays of these online matches with the goal of informing you where to find successes and illuminating mistakes that you should avoid when playing tactics multiplayer. As the journey to the tournament continues, you can expect video updates like this, where I take the lessons learned and craft a new version of the roster and explain my decisions, finishing the episode off with another series of monster battles. Following that up with another playtest, analysis, roster remake, and so on, until we culminate to the actual tournament where the story will conclude. If you're feeling inspired to create a tournament roster of your own, after watching today's video, make sure to check out tacticsleague.com for the latest updates to the PvP mod. Jump straight to their Discord for assistance setting up your backed up UMD to play this amazing PvP mod, and for scheduling battles with new friends. We look forward to meeting up with you soon. I am incredibly excited to finally realize the mission of this channel, because you will be there with me to share in the experience. This is Mikey from Tactics Live Tournament, signing off. I will see you in the next video. And until then, be well everyone.